In this video, we'll try to get into some overview on how the multicast is going to work in a production network scenarios. Like uh, there are five different steps which generally happens when whenever you want to receive the multicast traffic. Now we'll, we'll see a little bit uh, quick overview on these things. So the first thing is, let's say there is a server here, which is uh, sending a video streaming or the video server is sending a multicast traffic to some of the receivers and I have receivers on this side. Now there are two different receivers who want to receive the multicast traffic on, on this network as well as on this network. Whereas the other host is not a receiver. Now in order to ensure that your multicast traffic should go from this video server to the receiver, now the first thing the multicast server should be, uh, the administrator need to install a multicast application on the server here by using some layer three address. And that's what we use a class D address. We'll talk about multicast addresses, addressing categories, probably in our next sections. Now, typically you have some five classes in the IP addressing class A, B, C, D, and E, and the class D is reserved for multicasting. So the multicast server has to be configured with some multicast, uh, multicast address here. So the network administrator need to install the application on this server by using this multicast address. So that's the first step. Now, once you do this, probably this uh, multicast server is responsible for sending the video streaming for all the hosts who want to receive the multicast traffic from here. Now, the next thing is multicast application also need to be installed on the host, like whichever the host who want to receive the multicast traffic uh, has to be um, has to be installed with the application on this side for the same multicast address here. Now the receivers who want to receive the multicast traffic install a multicast application on the hand host. It can be any kind of multicast application like maybe a Cisco WebEx program or if you're watching some online videos probably this user is going to click on the link which will automatically generate a request for this multicast group or it can be any other Skype kind of applications. So the application get installed by using the same multicast address which we use on the server. So that's a, that's a complete second step what we need in order to uh, have the multicast traffic between this sender and the receiver. Now the next step is the host need to indicate the local router to receive the multicast traffic for this group. Now whenever this user clicks on the link Maybe if you are accessing some online videos or, or if, you, if you open that particular application, it's going to send a request to the nearest hop router uh, requesting that it wants to receive the multicast traffic for this group, uh, which is somewhere here, 224.555, whatever the address it is. Now this is done by a protocol called IGM, IGMP protocol. And we'll talk about this protocol more in detail in the next sessions. But here I just give some quick overview of all the steps what happens when when the multicast traffic is sent from the source to receiver. And the next step is once you send the request to the router, now this router has to figure out where the server is, maybe on a different network and how to reach that particular server. And that is done by some routing protocols in, in multicasting. We call them as multicast routing protocols. Now most commonly we use a protocol called PIM. Uh, protocol independent multicast again we'll talk about these protocols more in detail later on now igmp is the protocol which is responsible for the host to send a request to the router and the router is uh, is to figure out where is that multicast server on different network uh, one kind of routing we can say and in between this there is also one one more process happens here like in the lan we are connecting some switch now the host who want to receive the multicast traffic will send a, send the information to a two five some multicast group address based on the IP addresses, but the switches do not understand the IP addressing, so the equivalent IP address has to be converted into equivalent multicast MAC addresses so that the switch can recognize on which ports the multicast traffic has to go. So this is something we'll talk about this more in detail in our layer two multicast topics. And there are two different protocols can be used to make this job, uh, which is going to calculate the layer two multicast address. And it is used by, by some protocol like IGMP snooping and CGMP protocols. Now these are the five different steps which generally happen. And generally there are two different protocols uh, responsible for the complete multicast traffic where the client is going to send the request to the router 
by using some IGMP protocol and that's a that's a protocol which which works between the router and the host and then and then there is another protocol between router to router a multicast routing protocol and most commonly we use a pim protocol and then there are some other protocols which works in the switches that is layer to layer to multicasting called igmp snooping uh, snooping or a uh, cgmp protocols again these protocols are responsible for identifying the multicast traffic and keeping the track of the ports uh, which which supposed to send or receive the multicast traffic 